Welcome to one of five mini lectures for final year civil engineering students on the topic of geosynthetics. We aim to assist students in civil engineering and geotechnical engineers in understanding more about geosynthetics, which have emerged as a common solution in civil engineering projects over the past 50 years. With a basic understanding of geosynthetics, engineers are better placed to understand the applications, functions, design considerations and the various geosynthetic product categories. This program was funded by the International Fibre Centre and developed by Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University in conjunction with the Technical Textiles and Non-Wovens Association. The program consists of seven mini-lectures over three years of the engineering course, from second to fourth year. It moves from an introductory discussion through an intermediate stage in third year before focusing on some common functions and applications during fourth year. This topic focuses on the reinforcement function and is aimed at final year civil engineering students. In this unit, we look at the reinforcement function that geosynthetic products can provide across a range of common engineering structures. Reinforcement is the use of the stress-strain behavior of a geosynthetic to improve the mechanical properties of soil or other construction materials. This mini-lecture will explain the benefits of geosynthetic reinforcement and then look at three distinct applications where geosynthetic reinforcement is commonly used. The three applications we look at are basal reinforcement, such as underneath embankments, sub-base reinforcement, found in the formations for roads and highways, and retaining walls. In all three applications, the geosynthetic reinforcement acts in different ways to provide the same result, that is, to strengthen the soil. First, we will answer the question, why use geosynthetic reinforcement? Structures using geosynthetic reinforcement often require less excavation and imported backfill. This means structures are built quicker with less expense. Geosynthetic reinforcement allows engineers to build structures where previously they could not. Often civil engineering structures need to be built on very soft soil, that is, soil with a low bearing capacity. In mining and waste applications, engineers deal with many different types of soil and environmental conditions, such as mine tailings and waste material. These present very challenging conditions for building civil structures. An engineer must understand what solutions are available. For example, here is a road causeway being built across a mangrove swamp in a tidal area. You can see geosynthetic reinforcement products being rolled out at low tide. In this case, a non-woven geotextile and a geogrid. After rolling out the geosynthetic reinforcement, the engineers begin to build a road formation using imported coarse aggregate fill. Without geosynthetic reinforcement, a far greater amount of road fill would have been required. Another example is a port expansion. An embankment needed to be built into the sea, that is, a bund wall. The underlying soil in this case is the seabed, where the soil was very weak. A high-strength geotextile was used for basal reinforcement to support the bund wall. Here, rock is being dumped from a barge onto the reinforced base to build up the bund wall. This example shows a highway being built across a sugarcane field. The soft soil is being reinforced. You can see road aggregate interacting with a geogrid to form a strong base. The road formation can then be built on top of the base. Use of the geosynthetic product, in this case a geogrid, allowed for a more shallow road excavation, saving time and imported road base material. 
Geosynthetic reinforcement is also used in modern retaining walls. This is another example of a geosynthetic being used to strengthen soil in civil constructions, a very high vertical wall. It is bound to the soil behind by a geogrid. In level 2, we learnt that the tensile property of a geosynthetic resists stresses and contains deformations. It makes the soil stronger. Some examples of geosynthetic reinforcement are a geogrid behind a retaining wall allows close to vertical construction at a much reduced cost than if a mass gravity retaining wall was built. Soil reinforcement products reduce the depth of required excavation when building on weak soils. This often applies in embankments, roads and port facilities. Design engineers need to make decisions around load capacity, strength, durability and allowable deformation. In this unit, we look at the reinforcement function in a number of different engineering structures. Let's first look at basal reinforcement. The first concern a design engineer will have is the ability of the existing environment to support a new structure, such as an embankment. The most obvious example of this is a road embankment being built upon existing soil. Basal reinforcement is used when the soil is weak. Traditionally, builders would simply keep excavating or piling until the base was sufficiently strong. Now geosynthetic reinforcement can be used. Not only does this allow for a quicker and less expensive construction, the building process is also safer. Here is a typical road embankment. The base soil needs to support the loads imposed by the weight of the structure, plus the vehicles it is to carry a very common engineering structure. You can see a very weak subgrade soil in this case. Note the person at the right sinking into the soil up to his knees. His colleagues are walking on top of the geosynthetic being rolled out. You can see the immediate difference the product makes. Geosynthetic material is supplied in rolls of fixed width. It is important that the product is overlapped so there are no gaps as the structure settles. Even the smallest gaps between the reinforcement material at the base of the structure can introduce failure zones. In this case, the work crew is holding the overlapping rolls of geosynthetic reinforcement in place with soil. This helps to hold the rolls in place against the wind before the fill is placed to build the embankment. Large earth moving equipment is then used to spread aggregate material on top of the reinforcement and compact it. It is important that this equipment does not drive on the reinforcement itself. Also, the subgrade beneath the reinforcement must be prepared so there are no sharp rocks that can puncture or damage the reinforcement. Selection and design of the geosynthetic product is important. The engineer also needs to understand the characteristics of the aggregate and the impact the installation process can have on the integrity of the whole system. Strength reduction factors need to be applied in the design to account for potential damage during installation. The construction sequence is carefully managed. The dump truck has delivered the soil. The excavator will spread it over the geosynthetic. Neither vehicle will ever drive on the reinforcing product itself. The potential failure mechanisms of a structure being built on a weak surface are bearing capacity failure, lateral sliding failure, rotational stability failure, which of these three mechanisms is most prominent depends on the nature of the soil, that is, the existing subgrade, and therefore determines which geosynthetic reinforcement solution is most appropriate. 